acrimonious debate is in order to, as the senior member of this August House, to insinuate that there could have been some attempt to block his motion when we were geared and we overwhelmingly supported that motion. Is in order to take that route, Madam Speaker. I seek your serious ruling because this institution risk risk being destroyed by its own members, which should not be the case. We all have a responsibility to protect the integrity of this arm of government. I seek your serious ruling, Madam Speaker. Yeah. <coughs> um. Certainly that point of order gives me an opportunity to guide the House. And the guidance is that um, this is your House. And the management of um, the National Assembly is your management. And if there are any issues that members are dissatisfied about, they can handle away from the house, but through the office of the clerk. It is certainly not expected that you as honorable members who cast aspersions on your own management, your own members of staff. And of course, in the absence of evidence to substantiate that allegation, the Honorable Member for Mazabuka is out of order. He is indeed out of order to allege that there was connivance between management and the executive. That is my ruling. The Honorable Member is guided to continue his debate bearing that counsel in mind. May I have the microphone? Um, Madam, thank you very much. I always treasure your counsel. Um, to avoid any doubt, I said this is my suspicion, but I take your advice. I didn't allege anything. It was my suspicion, and I have some evidence. Madam, this, the, the president spoke about tribalism. Again, this is an act of cognitive dissonance. When, when tribal remarks have been churned out by members of this house, members of this house, on the right-hand right side, yeah. in the most recent times, I have information, I'm aware, that they were chided by the president. I know that for a fact. And it was a good thing for the president to chide and admonish and, uh, you know, uh, reprimand these individuals who are showing traits of tribalism. But you need to lead by example. President Jomo Kenyatta, you know what he used to do, madam? When a minister of government uh, contravenes, that's why when you go to the uh, uh, Kenyan parliament, you see the statue of Jomo Kenyatta with a, a shambok, which caught He would whip them publicly as a show of displeasure. Because when a minister of government takes a route of tribalism, he's in conflict with the Constitution. And you will see very soon that pub in public, they will be appearing in court. Because now we are not playing no games, madam. Anybody who discriminates another based on ethnic extraction, based on race, based on religion, will be seen at Chikwa court, not Chikwa now, what is it, the, the complex of the magistrate, will be taking them one by one. And this is a way to inoculate people who have got this inborn, abhorrent idea of thinking that some ethnic grouping are better than others. Now, on the 28th of June, 2015, President Lungu, he was campaigning in Malambo for my brother-in-law, as a matter of fact, Honorable Jack Schumer. He's not here now. He's gone. He was replaced by Honorable Zulu. This is what President Lungu had to say, and I have it here. Wako, ni wako, wamuvumo, yako. Lungu tells Malambo 
as if drumming support for Jacob Schumer. What is the source of that uh, statement you've just referred to? I'm an experienced man and I understand. I'll lay it on the table when I'm done. With your indulgence, let me just conclude my work. I'll lay authentic documents on the table and then you can rule me out of order, order if you so wish. Order on both sides of the house. The practice is that you state the source and then uh, you can uh, refer to what was said, after which you can lay the document on the table of the house. This particular document is from tumfueko.com. It's here. You ask me to say, and I'll read what tumfueko.com is saying. It's an online media. After that, I will come and deal with the issue that was in the news diggers. And maybe you've just done well for me to read what news diggers said on the issue of tribalism. The date, June 3, 2019. PF Media Director Sande Chanda says the tribal remarks by, made by three members of the ruling party were made in their personal capacity and did not represent PF's position. Well done, Mr. Chanda. He went on to say, three party officials, Professor Nkanduluo, Bizwo Mutale, and Chanda Nyela, issued tribal remarks against Tongas over the last few days in Chiluvi by election parliamentary constituency, sparking an outrage in opposition camps. I'll lay this on the table. This is what I'm talking about. I am told reliably, whether it was in the living room of State House or wherever, the president admonished these individuals quietly. What value does it bring to the society if a president cannot say, you are wrong, don't repeat it again. You don't lose nothing. What is wrong with issuing a, pu a public apology than coming here to make a, a point of order on a young MP and bring me in, in the debate? Because order. it's me. It <coughs> order, me. order, order, honorable member for Mazabuka Central. <laughs> that will not be allowed. That will not be allowed. You shall not bring a member of the House into your debate in that manner. Proceed. I withdraw. When you are in the defense mechanism, in English they say the guilty are afraid. If I were to find myself in a position of recklessly making a statement, I think uh, being a big boy entails that I must stand before a pedestrian and say, I'm sorry, forgive me, I slipped, this will not happen again. That's what normal people do. You can't hold on to something that is wrong. I moved that motion here, and I had members of this house, some of them ex-convict, -conv jailbed, sorry, not convict, who were, who were accused of stealing cars, who were fished from Chimbokaila, here in this house, order, coming to say I should order, come to apologize. Order. You see, um, honorable members, to the best of my knowledge, we have no record of a convict in this house. But more importantly, more importantly, honorable members, the president came to the house. He came to the house did his part by delivering a speech and the people out there expect that we will use this speech to help the president to manage the affairs of the state so as to benefit the people out there. Now, as honorable members, if we allow this debate to degenerate, we will lose the opportunity to support the president and indeed the executive in ensuring that they manage the affairs of the state to the benefit of 
all of us. It's an opportunity. We can debate and criticize in a manner that does not erode the dignity of both the office of the president and this house. We can criticize, but with the dignity that is expected of us. Honorable member for Mazabuka Central, you heed my counsel, I'm sure. Proceed. Yeah, I always treasure your counsel. Um, you know, the president spoke about equity, social justice, dignity, non-discrimination. I am sure, Madam Speaker, you know, and everyone knows, even a five-year-old child knows, that one opposition leader, who is leader of my party, at the time when he was accused of a frivolous charge of treason, he was slaughtered in a dog kennel to move him from the court to jail. What social justice would the president be talking about here, even if you want me to praise him? They say, do unto others as you wish them to do unto you. There's no glossing over issues here. What we discuss here should be the mirror image of what society should be. And I agree with you. We need to be cordial with one another. We need to respect one another. But respect does not mean that we must sweep the debt under the carpet. No. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Simple. We should not sweep the debt under the carpet. But as I come to an end, I think the president missed it. I would have supported him 100% if he came and said, we need the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, which would be headed by the church. We've helped each other for far too long. Let us try again. Let's try afresh. If you want to know, he did a good thing. His whole gesticulation that day was fine. We had great time. We laughed. He came here. And I asked the boss, sir, you are never available to talk, because we're running this country together. I, I asked, I told him, yeah. People want to wonder, what did Nkombo discuss with the president? Straight question, sir, you are not available. Give me your mobile phone number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that we can actualize the things you were talking about. The closest we can see, President Lungu, is my mother, the owner, the vice president. They shield him. He will only know the truth once he's out of the office. That he needed us more as a matter of fact, then we need him because we need to help him govern. As you have said it, we are not enemies. We are just competitors. That's what we are. Yeah. Yeah. Whoever said there was anything wrong to sit down and discuss? People should have been gone down in history to say they tried to talk. It just failed. I asked the boss, why not have a discussion? Why can't we talk? Yes, he's the boss. I mean, I have no qualms about it. He's the president. Unless you want to challenge me to go back into original mode when we didn't recognize him. He's a president, but he has a few more years to go. And you see the issue of governance. I mean, look, we, we, we have all now become like lawyers, eh, Madam Speaker. We know, some of us know, he's not even eligible to stand in the next election. We know. So we have a challenge with the ECZ to see who in ECZ will receive his nomination paper. It's part of the governance story. Thank you for the opportunity, Madam Speaker. <laughs> the Honorable Member for Kaputa.